Hello, and thanks for joining us for today's webinar titled, How You Can Make Downtime History. I'm Kevin Collins from Unitrends, and I'm here with Dave LeClaire, Vice President of Product Marketing, and he'll be taking us through the presentation today. And don't forget, one lucky attendee will be walking away with a $100 Amazon gift card. We'll contact the winner via email after the webinar. But before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. The session will be recorded, and after the event, you'll receive an email with a link to the on-demand version of the webinar. I would also encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. You can do so by typing them into the Q&A box in the bottom right-hand side of the player. We'll answer your questions at the end of the session. At this point, I'll turn it over to Dave. Enjoy the presentation, and Dave, take it away. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you to everyone who's attending today's webinar uh, about making downtime history. This is a continuation of a series of webinars we've been doing on our new rules of recovery. And our new rules were really set up as a, a way to get IT professionals thinking differently about data protection and recovery. We think that we're at a point in the industry where we need to start looking at new approaches and moving away from thinking about backup and recovery and thinking more towards continuity and IT resiliency. And how do we prevent downtime? How do we prevent data loss? How do we keep our businesses running no matter what? And that's really what our new rules have been about. I'd invite you to basically look at some of the other content that we have on that. We have a really great ebook um, actually on the new rules. But today we're going to specifically dive into uh, the first rule, which was around making downtime history even for small or mid-sized companies. Because many companies uh, have always uh, thought of disaster recovery as something that only can be done by, by, by large enterprises. And that's really not the case today. Um, so we're going to go through a few things um, in, in this webinar. We're going to go through kind of the state of the union as far as downtime prevention goes what uh, survey data, our surveys as well as other surveys are basically telling us people have deployed, what's working, what's not working. We're going to talk next a little bit about the cost of downtime and making sure that you're able to calculate your own cost of downtime and cost of data loss for your particular business. And lastly, we're going to talk specifically about how Unitrend Solutions can help make downtime history for your business as well. Uh, so let's dive into it and look a little bit at the, some of the survey results. So data loss and downtime is inevitable. It simply occurs. And when it does occur, it is expensive. So uh, here's a collection of some stats. 31% uh, of, of, of businesses have experienced data loss within the past two years. 91% have experienced downtime uh, in, in the past couple of years. And downtime tends to be expensive. The, Survey results, depending on which survey and who, which analyst you believe, um, range from uh, $90,000 $90, per hour to up to $300,000 an hour on average, uh, depending on which industry you're in. Uh, and whether, whether you're, you're in a, a large financial institution where your number is going to be much higher than that or if you're an SMB and your number is going to be much smaller than that, regardless, it, the impact on your business is profound. Um, and we've, and we've seen this impact growing over time, this number of, of for the cost of downtime, both in dollars as well as other costs, uh, ha, has been rising pretty steadily over the past uh, five to 10 years. And as a result of that, we see significant concern about data recovery and business continuity. So here's actually some, some information from Unitrend's own survey that we, we did just a few months ago, where we asked people, uh, what do you consider your top challenge are? 37% considered recoverability of their data to be a top challenge for them. Business continuity was even higher. 57% of users who were not using cloud considered business uh, continuity to be a challenge. It was a little bit lower for, for, for companies that had embraced cloud technology. But still, we're, we're talking, for the most part, uh, roughly half or a little above half of people looking at business continuity as being a challenge that they, they, they are not uh, addressing. And it really comes down to, am I able to recover when I need to recover in the manner that I would need to recover? So we ask people, what's their typical requirement? How fast do you need to recover? What's your recovery time objective for your applications, for your critical applications? And 76% of users 
who responded to our survey told us that their mission critical applications had to be back online uh, within four hours. Many of them actually had even shorter times, some uh, all the way down to as, as, as quick as five or 10 minutes. Um, but certainly the vast majority of them need them uh, back up and, and, and running within at least four hours. However, we also see a gap in are they able to obtain that? So we asked them during your last uh, downtime event, how quickly were you able to restore? And this is a large survey uh, of IT uh, users in general. Um, over a, a thousand responses were, were, were obtained in this survey. And we found that only about a, a third were able to recover within that four hour or less RTO objective. The majority were not. Uh, many required, about another third required, uh, up to 24 hours. And almost 40%, 38% required a full 24 hours or more to be able to recover from their last downtime event. Uh, so obviously there's this, this gap between what their business is saying they require and what they've been able to deliver. Uh, we also ask other questions such as, do you have a disaster recovery um, site set up? And good news, most, most did, but we still had about a third of, you, of users responding to the survey saying they had no DR set up whatsoever. But even among those that did respond, we asked them, if you do have a DR site, how frequently do you test it? Um, and this was another area where clearly the industry has a lot uh, of room uh, for improvement. 60% told us that they either test it annually or not at all. Um, and really uh, only about 40% were testing quarterly or, 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 or more frequently. And if you're testing annually or not at all, you're really leaving yourself open for uh, is that DR going to work properly when I expect it to? You know, have I kept up with the changes that are going on in my production environment? Have I, are things drifting apart? Um, so, uh, and one of the reasons why um, uh, people don't test is it, it tends to be very expensive and disruptive. But as a result of that, we see a kind of a plunging in confidence in general in the industry. So this, this is actually data from a forester uh, survey from, uh, uh, that's been done numerous times over the past several years where uh, they asked if the, the people were actually able to recover from their most recent disruption in less than an hour. Uh, and that number has really plummeted from 30% in 2007 down to 2013, the number was down to 2%. Uh, it might even be a little bit lower now. Um, so clearly, this is one of the reasons why we think we need to start thinking differently about recovery. We need to shift away from that backup recovery mentality and start thinking about continuity and how do I get resiliency uh, to, to downtime and resiliency to data loss. So let's talk a little bit about my separate second topic, which was, well, what can we do about this? Because these downtime events are unavoidable. Uh, they come from a range of sources. You know, we all know them. We deal with them every day, hardware failure things like ransomware, user error, uh, natural disasters, either local or, or, or wide areas such as you know, hurricanes and things like that. There's all sorts of, uh, of things that can cause downtime uh, that uh, if you're not properly prepared will trigger a significant downtime uh, event. Um, the impacts of these events are somewhat controllable by you. So while the, the event is kind of uncontrollable in many ways. Um, what we do when it actually happens is dependent on, on, on us in IT. There are numerous things that can be done to make sure that you have suitable tests in place, suitable systems in place, um, suitable plans in place so that everything will react and we can minimize the downtime or perhaps even prevent it altogether. But it does take upfront planning uh, and it does take um, some, some new approaches to, uh, to continuity. So when we look at the cost of downtime, this really is the first step I tell everybody when they're beginning this plan, is to figure out what your specific cost of downtime is. It's going to be different among different industries. It's gonna be different among different companies within the same industry. You need to figure out for your specific business what your exact cost of downtime is. And it goes beyond just monetary costs. Certainly there are monetary costs 
for uh, 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 lost transactions, business that was, was not able to be conducted. Uh, if you're in manufacturing, you may have scrap material. If you're in a highly regulated environment, there may be regulatory penalties for, for having your systems down. There are lots of things that kind of go into the monetary cost that rolls up to a P&L. Um, but certainly don't uh, forget about the other factors that are cost of downtime as well. And that includes damage to your reputation. How many of your customers attempted to do business with you, uh, maybe tried to come to your website, tried to do a transaction, tried to reach your, your sales team, but your phone systems were down or something along that way, and uh, because they were unable to conduct business with you or had a less than ideal experience because you were operating uh, in, a, in a suboptimal way, your, your reputation is damaged. Uh, and maybe to the point where it's irreparable and, and that customer is going to be lost. They're going to go take their business somewhere else. Um, so you need to consider not only monetary damage reputations, and in some industries there's even potential uh, risk of injury or even potential loss of life um, if you have downtime for certain systems. That's probably not for every industry, but certainly if you're in public safety, if you're in healthcare, um, if you're in certain um, high-risk manufacturing uh, or process-oriented um, uh, businesses, uh, having your control systems and safety systems uh, go down can certainly uh, ha have a high risk and high cost as well. Um, so you want to factor in all those things for your particular business, and you need to know that cost so you can then look at all your applications and, and figure out which ones are absolutely business, business critical which ones are important, which ones are uh, kind of necessary, and which ones are, are, are able to withstand significant downtime. You need to kind of build those layers so you know what type of protection each application requires. Your mission-critical applications need everything that you can throw at them. You need to make sure that you're doing backups, you're doing disaster recovery, you're testing that environment, you're, you're, you're potentially even throwing fault-tolerant systems uh, to make sure that um, – they stay up and running. Uh, your less important applications and things that um, maybe are app, uh, apps that run once a quarter or every once in a while, um, you know, probably don't need that same level of protection. Uh, and it, it really, uh, as building your particular business continuity plan for your business, you need to understand that and, and be able to figure out what the cost of downtime is for each of your applications so you can put the appropriate plan in place and put the appropriate technologies in place and justify them from a cost uh, standpoint uh, that the level of protection uh, is, uh, is warranted. Um, so this is why uh, we have another rule that, that basically says uh, uh, all workloads matter. Um, and uh, certainly while all workloads matter, not all workloads are created equal. Like I said, all workloads need some sort of data protection from data loss, um, from protection from ransomware, protection from, from accidental deletion, um, but only your more important applications probably need full downtime avoidance, um, uh, uh, including disaster recovery and all of that. Um, so you want to build your plan to take care of all the contingencies that could be thrown at, 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 at them, all the sources of data loss and downtime, whether they're hardware failures, disasters, human error, ransomware, network failure. Go through the checklist. Go through every possible scenario that you possibly can for each application. Figure out which actually needs minimum protection, which need maximum protection, and, and make sure that uh, your, your systems are, are, are going to work um, uh, properly uh, to make sure that you're covered. So when we look at kind of building this protection stack from kind of basic to, to, uh, to maximum, we're talking about increasing levels of protection, and we're also talking about putting technology in place that will increase our confidence that our systems are, will be, will be uh, uh, protected and will stay up and running no matter what kind of life throws at us. So when, when I think of this, I do think of it kind of as a protection stack. And at the bottom, we kind of have just basic local protection. You need to have backup in place really for all your applications. And with backup, if you have a modern backup system, you have some basic local protection that, uh, such as uh, instant recovery technologies, we'll talk more about that in just a second, um, that will 
allow you to do some, some very basic DR uh, locally if you have hardware failure or things like a ransomware attack. Um, next level up is uh, to make sure that you actually have protection to get your backup copies off-site. Um, this may be for, for, for long-term retention. Uh, this is also kind of the first layer of protection for what happens if my entire, if I lose my entire building or if I lose an entire data center, um, whether it's to a natural disaster or um, a, a, a wide-scale network outage or a data center, you know, having a, a fire in the sprinkler system go off. Uh, you want to make sure that you have at least one copy of your data, preferably multiple copies of your data, that are stored off your off-site at a secondary location. Um, and once we actually have copies of that data off-site, particularly if, they, if they're put into a cloud environment, we can start doing disaster recovery. And ideally, we want to actually have a DR environment set up with some sort of SLA guarantee. And this is where the new disaster recovery as a service offers from companies like Unitrends really closed the gap on what was possible for only for large enterprises who could build their own data center, staff it, uh, and, and put all the processes put in place um, that was really kind of out of reach for, for smaller companies. DRAS now brings that capability into reach for just about anybody. It's a very cost-effective, easy way to have that off-site protection and the ability to spin up critical workloads in a cloud environment off-site uh, without having to build your own data center, without having to staff it. Um, and in many cases, if you actually have a service um, uh, in, in place that actually will deliver you a, a specific SLA for recover, recovery, it may actually even be more efficient than what you can do uh, uh, yourself uh, with, your, with your current staff. And as we move up the stack, the last thing we want to basically look at is for those critical applications use what we call recovery assurance technology. Recovery assurance technology is automated testing capability that validates that your backups and your DR environments are working properly and that you're going to be able to recover. We'll talk a little bit more about this in just a slide or two. So I wanted to dive specifically into a couple of those features that I just talked about because they are key to making sure that you can put together a system that takes care of many of the contingencies that we talked about. The first is instant recovery. What instant recovery is, is it's something that's built into uh, many backup solutions, including ours, uh, that allows you to do very fast local recovery uh, of a, a, a VM. Uh, in our case, we do it for VMware. We do it for Hyper-V. We also do it for physical window systems. But we essentially use the backups that are on the backup appliance um, to restore a VM that actually uh, uh, may have had a downtime event. So you may have a, a VMware host uh, or, or a Hyper-V host uh, or maybe an individual guest fails. What you're able to do is within uh, just a few minutes, you can actually use the backup uh, and the, uh, in, in VMware's case, uh, the VMDKs that are stored on that backup appliance and uh, use those kind of as your, pro uh, your, your production um, storage for a little while. So essentially, a new VMware guest or host is basically created. Uh, it's started up from the backup uh, that's running off the appliance. Um, and while you fix the, the actual production VM or production host, um, your workload continues to run using uh, a new VM that's running on a new host, um, uh, as well as the storage that's located in your backup appliance. When you actually uh, ha have your, your production environment uh, recovered, you can uh, vMotion uh, from the appliance back to uh, your production uh, VM, and you're back up and running. And you've minimized the downtime to just that few minutes very early on when you're basically rebooting from the backup. Um, this is something that is a very powerful feature that truthfully not enough uh, 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 users actually are aware that this capability exists. 
And like I said, we can do this for, for both VMs as well as physical workloads. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, different ways of getting uh, disaster recovery uh, up and running. Unitrends has a couple different solutions uh, for doing this. Um, we have the ability to uh, utilize uh, a, a number of different solutions to essentially get backup copies of your data replicated off-site. Uh, we have our own purpose-built Unitrends Cloud where copies of your data can be moved from your physical uh, recovery series appliance or your uh, Unitrends Enterprise backup software appliance uh, to the Unitrends Cloud. Um, so those, the, those copies of your data are now off-site. Uh, and once there, we're actually able to, to spin up uh, uh, our DRAS uh, uh, offer and have those VMs run within our, our, our cloud um, once, once there. However, we also support a number of other options for getting your backup copies off-site as well. We support the ability to get your, your, your data into a hyperscale cloud such as Microsoft uh, Azure or uh, Amazon AWS. Uh, we also work with a number of service providers um, who have MSP environments where they're running essentially uh, uh, specific clouds where you can replicate uh, to as well, or you can even build your own uh, private cloud implementation at a secondary site. Um, so, uh, but once you ha we have those copies off uh, into the Unitrends cloud, as I said, we have the ability to, to run those VMs or those physical workloads that we've moved the backup copies into the Unitrends cloud, we now have the ability to run them in the Unitrends DRAS offer. And with the Unitrends DRAS, you get a complete white glove experience. Um, our team is there to help you uh, with uh, getting your, your, your data into the cloud and setting up your environment for recovery and get it tested. Uh, our DRAS offer comes with a one hour SLA for your entire environment. So if you have a disaster at any point in time, uh, you simply make one phone call to Unitrends uh, and within an hour, all of your workloads are back up and running in our cloud um, uh, and you, you're back up uh, in, in business for those, for those workloads that have been spun up. It's a very cost effective, easy way of getting a DR solution without having to build your own, your, your own uh, uh, DR environment. The second option we actually have for doing DR is something that we call Boomerang. Boomerang is a very fast, easy virtual appliance that replicates your data from VMware into AWS or Azure um, and, uh, and stores it in, in low cost uh, cloud, uh, cloud storage using what we call pilot light uh, architecture. Um, and what we mean by that is we don't require any compute uh, necessary. So if you don't have a disaster, you're just simply replicating data directly from your VM, uh, your VMware environment directly into an Azure storage blob or AWS uh, S3 uh, storage. Uh, and only when you declare a disaster uh, and do a single button click to uh, spin up those, those workloads in the cloud, do you suddenly start to uh, uh, take and, and have to pay for the compute resources in the cloud. Um, Boomerang is very easy. It automatically uh, auto detects your VMs, basically begins replicating your data. You can set up your workloads into protection groups so that uh, any dependencies that they have in each other um, can, can, be, uh, can be understood. Uh, Boomerang does all the machine transformation, so all the networking configuration between your VMware environment and the cloud environment is all taken care of. Um, and it's a very, very fast, easy, and highly cost-effective way of getting a DR environment spun up uh, in the hyperscale cloud uh, for, for, for your virtualized environment. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is the recovery assurance technology that I mentioned earlier. And one of the reasons why we see so many businesses struggle with confidence that they're going to be able to recover is Testing your DR environment and testing your backups is time consuming, it can be very disruptive, it can be very expensive. Recovery Assurance essentially is technology that automates that DR testing 
and it basically ends that DR testing hell forever. So you can actually have automated tests that are running in your DR environment that are running as often as you deem necessary, once a month, once a week, once a day, however often you, you feel is, is necessary. And the automated test will run, will validate that your VMs are working properly. Um, it will actually uh, spin up your workloads even complex multi-tier, n-tier app, uh, applications that have dependencies across multiple VMs, and we'll test and exercise all of it uh, and validate that not only did the, work, the workload come up, but that it met your recovery time objective and your recovery point objective in actuality. So as a result of that, you have absolute confidence that you have a certified recovery point um, that you can re restore from when you need to depend on it. So with that, you have a guaranteed recovery, and you can have absolute certainty that you're going to be able to recover using those certified recovery points that have been tested in a sandbox environment uh, uh, on a regular basis. You know that that's going to be able to recover, that your environment hasn't drifted apart, and you're getting sent to your environment, um, your inbox, a, a, a detailed report that explains exactly what was tested, what your RPO goals were, what your RTO goals were, and what we actually tested and found. So in this particular case, we had multiple applications that were tested. Uh, most of the RPOs were set up as, as one day. Uh, most of the RTOs were set up as 30 minutes uh, or less, and you can see what we tested and found. Um, everything was in compliance. That way, if something was not in compliance, you can do something about it uh, calmly um, without having to do it uh, in a mad scramble when you're actually trying to recover uh, during the disaster. So with that, I think I'm going to close up real quickly. Um, just going to basically uh, finish up with some, some final details on, on Unitrends. So Unitrends, we're here to protect your ideas and protect your business and make sure that you stay up and running no matter what life throws at you. We do that through the products that I talked about, uh, as well as many others that are in our connected continuity platform. And what our connected continuity platform is, it is a suite of cloud-empowered continuity services that extend from your continuity planning, uh, basically to help you build that, that, that uh, business continuity plan. Um, we have multiple backup appliances, both physical backup appliances, as well as software virtual appliances, as well as backup software that you can install into a Linux environment. Uh, we have a number of, uh, of cloud continuity services for, for storing your backups offsite, uh, whether it's in a purpose-built cloud from Unitrends or from any number of third-party providers, including the leading hyperscale uh, uh, cloud providers. We have a number of different uh, options for doing DR and, and DRAS. Uh, all basically being wrapped up with that recovery assurance technology, whether you, you want to do recovery assurance actually in your own data center, in the Unitrends cloud, uh, or in a secondary location that you're managing. That's really kind of quickly summary, summarizing what's in the single platform that we call the Connected Continuity Platform. And I just want to leave you with, with four major points on that, on that Connected Continuity Platform. It's designed to protect everything you have your virtual workloads, your physical workloads, your cloud workloads. All told, we support well over 250 different operating systems, hypervisors, and applications in our compatibility matrix. Everything from very old uh, Unix operating systems to the latest virtual, virtualized hypervisors are, are protected. We want to be able to deliver you continuity wherever you need it, whether it's in your primary location, your secondary lo data center, in the cloud, uh, in a partner environment, we want to make sure that uh, your your backup copies and your DR can 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 run wherever you need it, all with that guaranteed recovery and continuity delivered through those recovery assurance technologies within a single, very intuitive, very easy to use platform, uh, all from from a, a single vendor. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap up. Uh, I'm going to pop up something just uh, to, so you can see that we actually have trials of uh, our various software solutions that you can try out today, um, as well as a link if you actually are interested in 
seeing uh, more and seeing uh, a live demo of some of what we talked about here today. With that, I think for the last couple of minutes, we're going to take some, some Q&A. So I'm going to kick it back to Kevin. Thanks, Dave. Great presentation. Uh, just a reminder, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A panel at the bottom right-hand uh, corner of your player. Uh, and we'll start off with um, a few questions here. How does instant recovery for a physical Windows system work? It's a good question because uh, we are one of the only backup vendors that actually does instant recovery for non-virtualized environments. In virtualized environments, we're obviously using the fact that you can be motion VMs around. Um, what we're doing with uh, uh, our physical uh, uh, Windows instant recovery is using the fact that we have very powerful P to V technology built into our platform, something that will do a physical to virtual transformation of that uh, uh, Windows workload. So essentially, we, we, we do a transformation of that Windows workload, and we can either run it within uh, uh, a VMware environment if you have one, but if you don't have a VMware environment, if, if for example, maybe only you only have physical workloads, we actually can do a P to V transformation to a KVM hypervisor that actually runs and lives inside our backup appliance. And you can actually run your entire workload, not only the storage, but also the compute uh, and, and memory is being delivered straight from the physical appliance uh, that you've deployed from Unitrends. Um, so because of that technology, which is uh, somewhat unique uh, to Unitrends, we're able to do this not only for virtualized workloads, we're able to do it for, for physical windows as well. Excellent, thanks. So Alan asked a question, what would be the typical bandwidth requirement for about 200 terabytes of data? Is the replication a trickle or scheduled many times per day? Um, well, 200 terabytes is an awful lot of data. So uh, the first thing I would say for 200 terabytes, we would recommend that that uh, initial amount of data be seeded into the cloud. So um, the way our seeding service works is we would actually send you physical disks that you would actually do uh, a full backup to. You'd send them to by uh, a kind of overnight carrier to our cloud team who would do that first load into, into the cloud. So at that point on, all we're having to do is uh, do updates. Uh, we, we'll, we could use an incremental forever strategy and only have to send the change data. So the amount of data um, that has to go over the WAN is highly variable. Um, so I can't give you kind of a straight answer, unfortunately, um, uh, at least not on, on a call like this. Um, certainly we can engage with one of our engineers. And the reason why it's not a straight answer is because it's very dependent on the, 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 what your data looks like, how much of it compresses, uh, what's the change rate of, of that data. If your change rate is only, you know, one or two percent uh, per day, it's very different than if your change rate, the amount of data changing in that in that workload is five or ten percent uh, per day. But as a general rule, you can kind of think of you're going to need about two megabytes of bandwidth, sorry, two megabits per bandwidth per terabyte of data if you have about a two percent change rate. Um, that's kind of a just rough rule. Again, your mileage may vary uh, let's talk uh, <laughs> about your particular implementation uh, if, uh, when it comes to actually uh, the, the doing of an actual deployment. But at least that gives you some planning guidance. Okay. Uh, I got a couple more questions here. Terry asked, can you explain the difference between Unitrends DRAS and Boomerang DRAS? Okay. Um, yeah, the reason why we have different solutions is because uh, Different customers are looking for different things. Uh, the Unitrends DRAS is part of uh, a solution where literally everything is from end to end is controlled by Unitrends. Uh, you're basically taking your local backups from your, your Unitrends appliance, you're moving them into the Unitrends cloud, uh, and then spinning them up using the Unitrends DRAS offer. We deliver in that environment a very white glove experience. Uh, if you have any issue, you know who you're going to call. It's going to be us. We're going to be there 24-7 to work with you. Um, and we're able to deliver that one-hour SLA guaranteed as a result of that. Boomerang is set up more for uh, the customer who's looking 
to deploy DR into a hyperscale environment. And in that case, obviously, we don't control what's happening in AWS or, or Microsoft Azure. Um, so it's, it, it's a very cost-effective solution. It's a very easy solution. But uh, the cloud portion of it, we're, we're responsible for the replication. Um, and we will be responsible for our performance of spinning up those workloads. But if Azure goes down or if there's something wrong with uh, your, your particular AWS S3 implementation, uh, you're going to be uh, dealing with uh, uh, the, the uh, hyperscale vendor in addition to us. Uh, and as a result of that, you know, we have what we typically see for recovery times uh, with those VMs, but we're not, uh, which is, can be as short as a few minutes, um, but it's not something that we can deliver a guaranteed SLA on the way we can with uh, the, the Unitrends experience. So kind of summarize up, it's all Unitrends or uh, Unitrends plus, you know, the hyperscale vendor of your choice. Um, that's really kind of the difference. Okay, just a couple more questions and we'll wrap it up. Uh, Casey asks, does recovery assurance work within their data center as well as in their DR site? Yes, the recovery assurance technology is able to work and test your backups and your DR environment. Um, you can run it locally in your backups. You can run it, um, and this is probably more typical, in a secondary location. Um, where you have a second uh, 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 appliance uh, uh, that you're replicating data to. Uh, we also use uh, the recovery assurance as a service as part of our cloud uh, offer as well. So for any of the applications that you're running in the Unitrends Cloud uh, DRAS offer, you can choose to actually have recovery assurance as a service on those DRAS VMs as well. Um, so it's very flexible. It can run in, in a number of locations, including locally in your data center if you don't have a secondary location. Okay, last question. Andrew asks, do you have any tools to help us build a backup and recovery plan? Um, yes. Matter of fact, um, there's a website that we actually run as a free service called bcdrlink.com. Um, BCDR Link is a, uh, a planning website that allows you to build out your own uh, business continuity plans. It actually uh, provides some best practices uh, in there. It allows you to import any information that's specific to your environment, floor plans, you know, custom checklists, anything like that can be stored in there, as well as any of the details in your particular plan. And the reason why we like uh, BCDR Link uh, as a location to store your plan is rather than, you know, storing it on your computer or storing it, you know, in a desk uh, uh, drawer in your office is once it's in the cloud, it's available. Even if you have a disaster if you're not able to get to your building, you'll be able to get to your, 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 your uh, BCDR uh, uh, plan because it's stored uh, in the Unitrends cloud. Um, so I would start there. Um, we do have some other um, uh, tools that allow you to do some planning as well. We have a few uh, calculators, for example, that are available on our website for free that allow you to uh, calculate RTO uh, times and things of that nature in your environment. Uh, but bcdrlink.com uh, is, is, uh, is a very good place to start. Excellent. Thank you. We're just about out of time. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and you'll receive an email with a link to the on-demand version in a, in a couple of days. Thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to having you on future webinars. Thanks, everybody.